Hi everyone. Um, I was born in Delhi and I grew up in Delhi. I went to school in Delhi like you guys. And during our school summer vacations, uh, most of us, my, most of my friends used to go to hill stations or to foreign countries to beat the heat because Delhi gets really hot. But for us, we used to go to national parks or jungles to see our grandfather and father making uh, movies. And uh, most of my friends used to have video games by then. And uh, I used to have uh, snakes. My father used to teach me how to hold snakes with my delicate hands, actually my grandfather. And most of my friends used to have so many toys, but I had a real Asiatic lion cub to take care of because it was abandoned by his parents. And most of my friends used to hate wildlife, hate pets and animals. And, but I used to have endangered uh, wild dog pup to take care of. My duty was to feed him milk every day and make sure that he survives because he was left behind by their parents. But you know what? When I used to go back to my school, I used to tell my friends that, listen, I saw this, I saw that. Um, they were like, they used to call us, they used to make a lot of fun of us. They were like, you are jungle brothers because you spend too much time in forest. My twin brother is, is actually six minutes older than me, but uh, he's a little short. They used to tease him by calling them Mowgli. And we used to call us, these are wild brothers because they spent so much time in, in, uh, in forest. Uh, then I realized their mindset was quite, quite focused because they always think about seeing a tiger. They used to say, did you see tiger in the forest? I'm like, yes, but I did see waterfall. I see, saw, saw this beautiful orchid, which was just two of them. I was like, no, 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 Sher, dekha. have you seen tiger? I was like, yeah. So I realized by growing up that tiger is a flagship species. They say that if you protect tiger, you protect the entire ecosystem because it's right on the top, which is absolutely right. But while growing up, we decided that we will change this. We will take our camera as a conservation tool and make put focus on even lesser known animals, uh, which needs more focus on our planet. So, uh, so we immediately passed out and make a uh, recent film. And I would just like to ask you, how many of you know where the pandas live? China. 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 So you will be surprised to know that pandas are found in India. That was my, one of my first film. And it took me three years, trust me. They are more endangered than even tiger. Their numbers are even less than even tigers. And in my three years, I could only spot 18 times. So now I have to get money and convince my father to make a film. So my father said, you know, why don't you make a film on a bigger cat, which will be more popular? Then I said, you know, I'd, I'm not afraid of being failed. I'll try. And if I'm not able to make a film on red pandas, I will say I tried and failed, instead of just being failure. So my uh, father being really generous enough, he said, okay, so you're starting film, why don't you do it? Then we wanted the funds. So no broadcaster came forward to fund our film because they have tried and they failed. So we eventually put our own money in to make our film. And uh, we wanted to film the entire breeding behavior of this panda which was not seen before anywhere. We went to do a lot of research, we found a lot of information and back went to, this, uh, to the field to film it. But the other challenging part was the courtship behavior happens only for a single day. Yes, they only breed for a single day. And to find them in minus 30 degrees, it was quite challenging. So my next clip is whether we were able to film it or not, but we were there, we'll show you. Vijay quickly focuses in. The male is transfixed and makes his move. He presents himself with a telltale twitter and a hot pursuit begins. At last he manages to get a grip and starts to lick and groom the female. Mm. 
Mating lasts for up to 20 minutes. And it's much more gentle than the noisy, neck-biting affairs of the cat family. Incredible! This is the first time anyone has filmed red pandas mating in the wild. So yes, uh, we were able to film, uh, it was the first ever photographic record of them uh, mating and able to film the entire breeding behavior. Uh, film was finally broadcasted uh, around the world and it went on getting 21 national international award including the Wild Screen Award, which is also known as Green Oscar, and Television Highest Award, Emmy. Awards are one thing which makes you motivated, but for me, it was not still satisfying. We wanted to use our film as a conservation tool. We wanted to work with the policy makers. So we tried to convince the chief minister and the forest department. We zoomed onto the corridors where they normally found and try to conserve, conserve it. And that was the biggest satisfaction for me. What my film and what my imagery can prove the world that there's still pandas in India and we need to save them. If you think this is tough, my recent work, which just finished, is more tougher. Uh, it's uh, on the little creatures, um, uh, which on amphibians. We were trying to make a film on the amphibians of India. This is first ever film again. There's a lot of films on Amazon, but no film on frogs. But I would like to show you and ask you how big you think that frog is. Can anyone tell? Yes. Yes, but how big? Is it this big? This big? This big? Can it? Yeah, I can see the hands. You can just say. This big? This big? This big? Okay. So this big on consensus that is almost this big. But you'll be surprised to know how big they are. They are not bigger than my thumbnail. Yes. So I thought I have filmed tigers in Ranthambore. I have filmed snow leopard and red panda in minus 30 degrees. I have filmed Asiatic uh, lions in almost 50 degrees. I have been charged with elephant. What worse can it be? It will be easier. Uh, frogs? Oh, easy piece of game. But I never realized the, the challenges involved in that. So, as I said, this is for the first time any of Indian guy was trying to do something to, for the frogs. So they, we try to try, and when you talk about frogs, the two things come in your mind is night. There's no light. So we try to invent our own lights. We try to use red lights to make sure that we go closer to the animals and we go so we go closer to the animals by using the red light so they don't get disturbed. And we slowly used to go to the animal and make sure that they get used to us and then we bring our own lights in and try to increase the light and then try to film the behavior. Because for us as a wildlife filmmaker and photographer, the conservation is a key thing. And wildlife filmmaking ethics is very strong. We don't want to disturb the animals like a lot of people do. We want to keep safe distance and respect their surroundings. The second most difficult thing is when you talk about the challenges, light and the other one is rain. I have to keep my equipment dry. And I still remember we were filming, we wanted to have a sequence of frog calling. And we were there, waited there, we put our cameras and we waited to frogs to call. And as soon as I turned my camera on, it didn't get turned on. Because there's so much humidity that my camera wouldn't work. So we had to have special bags to keep our camera dry and uh, make sure the camera is there. Then we realize it's just not the camera, even we used to keep ourselves dry. We are not frogs, frogs can breathe from their skins, but we, ha we are humans, we have to adapt to them now. So we, our, skin, our skins were starting to peel off, uh, we had a fungal diseases coming on, because one day is fine, one week is fine, but when you're spending lots of months in, in rain, it's, it's not, not good for your skin. Uh, so it was a big challenge. Uh, yeah, it was a very big challenge to uh, make on the film. So I will try to show you some clips from my f uh, film just to show what these frogs can do. I just wanted to ask you before that, uh, how many people like dancing here? Quite few hands. Quite few hands. Um, well, trust me, I'm a very bad dancer. I I'm a very bad dancer. And if I start dancing here, trust me, you'll be all gone. But will you believe me if I said these small creatures 
can dance too. No? Let's have a look. Guarding their precious rock, the males are on a lookout for any intruders. To warn off trespassers, males start by tapping their feet in what appears to be a seductive tap dance. The intruder ignores the warning and makes his move. The resident male is prepared to fight for his territory, and the intruder is up for the challenge. They get into position, ready for a kicking match. They chase each other from one rock to another, This might look easy, but for a frog barely the size of a human thumb, it takes a lot of energy to stretch its leg with such vigor. The bout is as exhausting as it may be for the human contestants in an actual kickboxing fight. Soon, a female emerges. She is much lighter in color and is almost twice the size of the male. The victorious male positions himself on the prized rock, as the female will only choose the one who impresses her the most. Foot flagging is a captivating skilled behavior attracting the female's attention. Tapping feet, stretching legs, and flashing toes, torrent frogs with their repertoire of moves have earned the title of the Indian Dancing Frog. Tolerating my presence and impressed by the romantic dance, the female chooses her mate. As a filmmaker, I wanted to get uh, the scientific data in a very interesting way so people can understand. So we saw this behavior and um, uh, my brother actually, he's a very good art uh, editor, he decided to add this special music, which we got specially composed of tap dancing to gel with the frogs and to obviously going all the way till the finale of where the foot flagging happens. Um, just may not making it interesting, but also be able to understand a lot of people, just not pure science and facts. Um, it's a visual display which they normally use because scientists believe that the streams are getting louder, so they need to also do some visual communication so that uh, the females can see them. Uh, it was not easy again because when you see a small uh, frog like that to do so something like this is unbelievable. And uh, if you think this is tough, can you expect what I'm showing you doing next? That frog, if you think this is tough, this, the, uh, the frog which I'm trying to show is, does incredible stuff. And trust me, you won't believe it. Uh, it's known as the Kumbara frog. Kumbara means potter. Can you believe the frogs can do pottery? Yes, have a look. Having fertilized the spawn, the male leaps off and waits until the female finishes laying all the eggs. She may lay around six to nine eggs, usually on a twig, plant, or rock that overhangs a stream. In the wilderness, not all goes unnoticed.
but helpless parents can only watch from a safe distance while an opportunistic crab makes a meal of their eggs. The pair investigates the nesting twigs. Sadly, the entire clutch of eggs is gone. Scientist Dr. Guru Raja, who has spent his lifetime studying unique behaviors of amphibians, has documented how Canberra frogs have a peculiar strategy to protect their eggs. The males fill their hands with mud, stand on their hind legs, and then gently apply the mud. They use their fingers in a similar way as humans. Kambara, in the local language, means potter. It is an ode to the male frog's finesse when it applies mud to the eggs. Collecting mud from the stream below, this plastering job may take 25 minutes, involving numerous laps until the male is satisfied with covering the eggs from all sides. The eggs themselves are secured tightly to the twig or leaf and are difficult for even a human to remove. This mud casing also prevents the eggs from drying out. I am stumped by all I have learned tonight. Who would have thought frogs could be potters? See, frogs are one of the oldest creatures found on the planet. Ever since the dinosaur time, they have been coming and adapting to the subtle changes. So we wanted to focus our film that we not only just talks about the new species of frogs which have been found around India, but go into the behavior which has not seen before. Some unique behavior which has never seen before by even scientists. So the whole effort was just to try to get them on camera and show the world and talk more about frogs. And I want to show you the last clip from my film. Um, it, it is, if you think this was tough, that was the most challenging sequence of the entire film. Uh, it talks about a, a frog called Purple Frog. It makes it more challenging, why? Because this frog remains underground and it will only come out, will only come out only once a day. Like they will spend entire lifetime under the ground and for their breeding behavior, they will only come out for a single day. For me to get there on the right time was very crucial. We spent one year, so this film took almost three years to make, just, to, just chasing this particular frog. And first year we went to the spot, we saw the tadpoles in the river, so we were already very late. And next year we decided to go early to make sure that we managed to find this frog. And then, because of climate change, there was much, not much uh, rain happened and they didn't come out. So last year was our last chance. So we told my brother, this is the last chance. If we don't find it, then we have to change the storyline or we have to find some other species because if we can't film it. My fellow photographer's friends have managed to take pictures of this individual in more of a captive places, but nobody has ever documented the entire breeding behavior. So this was just the last chance. And uh, so I just wanted to say that we managed to find a female with a male, but did we are able to get on the camera? Let's have a look. It seems it's almost time for the female to lay her eggs, but something is not right. Suddenly, muddy water from the upper mountain range flows down into the stream and floods the nursery with debris. I am scared that this might ruin the only opportunity to be able to film the breeding finale of the purple frog after coming so close to witnessing it. But what I see next is incredible. The egg laying process has begun and the female purple frog starts releasing the eggs.
It has been observed that during egg laying, the male holding the female spine stimulates and pushes her to facilitate the release of eggs. The male collects the eggs in his hind limbs and fertilizes them. The male then uses his hind legs to paste the clutch of eggs onto the rock surface. It could take up to 30 minutes to complete the entire egg laying process. This is a rare moment for us to be able to document such instances that were hitherto unknown to even scientists. The purple frog is an explosive breeder, laying thousands of fertilized eggs that are deposited in arrays. It is estimated that a mating pair lays about 3,600 eggs in one night, which is exhausting for the pair. It's time for the pair to return to their life underground until the monsoon returns in a year. In most frog species, the male would leave the female after mating. But through this film, another myth is busted. The male will not leave the female even after fertilizing the eggs, and they go back to the forest together. This is for the first time the scientists accompanying us confirm that the entire breeding cycle of the purple frog has been filmed in the wild. This is a key example showing how the film can be a conservation tool. Because this is the first time ever somebody has able to film the entire breeding behavior, this power of visual, uh, we are trying to work with the scientist and try to write a paper on it so that people who want to study this frog after this can have some kind of a reference. So as a tool for conservation, we are working with the researchers to come out as a, as a very strong conservation film. Uh, well, you'll think why it's important, because I don't know if you know that around the world, amphibians are in decline. On the half, around the world, half of the amphibian species are in decline, and one third is already been threatened with extinction. The planet has already lost 80% of its forests to de deforestation. And India loses 135 hectares of forest every day to the big development projects. This female deer was pregnant, and her young ones also die because of a uh, car accident, and they won't be able to see the light. Uh, this is a sad situation of uh, India, growing India basically, where we are cutting through the corridors and trying to make development possible. So we need, I just wanted to give you another example, like in Northeast India, there are more than 100 hydro dams coming to give electricity, not to that state, but to state Delhi. So um, development is always good, but sustainable development is very important. And I want to show this image, it's a very powerful image to show that it's so important to conserve our nature. It could be a river flowing behind your house, which is polluted. It could be trees cutting in your colony. It could be any important environment issue. I would strongly suggest that if you start taking pictures and start making videos, try to educate friend which is sitting beside you, try to educate your teachers, try to educate your friends, and ultimately try to educate the whole community. Make a, at least start talking about it. That's the key thing. And that's the power of visual. Lastly, I just want to show you the visual of one of my favorite flower, one of the most beautiful flower on this planet. And what makes it unique? That it blooms only once in 12 years. Yes, it only blooms only once in 12 years. Con Kurenji, uh, and it's found in South India. And there's so much, to, so, there's so much things to see in, around the world. And I, I personally don't think that I'll be able to see in this lifetime. And it's a beautiful planet there. So I would really strongly, you know, don't think your camera just as a box. Think as a powerful machine. 
And remember, it's not the camera which makes the picture, it's the person behind it. So you all have the power to make a difference. So please keep clicking. Thank you.